It's been seven years since I started this channel and somehow I have yet to dive into creating full real 3D experiences. For a while, I'll admit I stayed in my comfort zone even as requests kept rolling in. But last weekend, I came across this site of the day on awards that showcased some incredibly smooth 3D animations. This got me inspired and after a few hours of playing around with the basics of 3JS, I pulled together a close replica with all the key animations. In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring a custom 3D model onto an HTML page, animate it with a floating effect, add a smooth rotation on scroll and even scale it out at a scroll point. I'll be using HTML, CSS, 3JS, GSAP and scroll trigger to make it all happen. If you find this tutorial helpful, dropping a like on the video helps spread my work and motivates me to keep going. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. To access the source code, check out the Pro membership via the link in the description. With Pro, you will unlock source code for cool projects like this twice a week plus a complete responsive website template every month. Alright, let's dive right in. Before jumping in, let me quickly share where I found the 3D model used in this video. Since I don't have experience creating 3D models in Blender or similar tools, I turned to Sketchfab which is a popular site with tons of free 3D models. I'll link the exact model I'm using in the description below. The project setup is simple, we have got an index.html file, a CSS file and a javascript file to handle everything. For assets, I created a folder named assets where I have added a barcode image, the 3D model in GLB format and a sound effect for the scanning animation will play as the model rotates and scales out to enhance the scan effect. Also make sure to add all the required CDNs to your index.html file. Alright, let's dive into the HTML setup. Let's start by adding an empty div with the class model. This is where we'll render our 3D scene. Next, we'll set up four main sections, the hero section, info section, scanner section and outro. Inside the hero section, I will add an h1 and h2 along with some placeholder text in a paragraph tag. These elements are optional but they'll make the page look more complete and closer to the original website. In the info section, we'll start by adding some tags, each as a separate paragraph element. Then we'll add an h2 with additional placeholder text. Moving down to the scanner section, I'll create a row called scan info and add some basic text there. Below it, we'll add a scan container div which we'll style later in CSS as well as a barcode image and a button styled using a paragraph tag, keeping it simple. Finally, in the outro section, we just need an H2 to wrap things up. And that's it for the HTML setup. Now let's move on to styling. Let's start with some global styling. I'll reset margins and paddings, set box sizing to border box for consistent sizing and apply clean font with all text transformed to uppercase. For the HTML and body, we'll set the width to 100 viewport width and height to 500 viewport height. I'm adding an extra 100 viewport height here compared to the four sections as we'll be pinning the scanner section to extend its scroll for a bit longer. Images will be set to cover the full width and height of their containers using object width set to cover. For the canvas element which we'll use to render our 3D scene, I'm positioning it as fixed at the top left covering the entire viewport. Moving to typography, the H1 is centered with a bold font size of 10 viewport width. H2 has a slightly smaller font size of 2.5 viewport width with a medium weight while paragraph text is set to 12 pixels with a consistent line height. Now for the model div. We are setting it to fixed position, covering the full viewport height and width and giving it a soft background color. Sections are set to be full width and height and center the inner content both vertically and horizontally with a flexible column layout and a small gap for spacing.
In the hero section, we have added a slight margin below the h1 and centered the paragraph text with a width of 50% for a clean look. For the info section, we added an extra gap for spacing, centered the h2 and used spacing for tags. Now in the scanner section, the scan info row is positioned at the top with a full width layout and padding. The scan container will have a fixed width and height and a solid border with rounded corners. Moving to the barcode, it's positioned at the bottom left of the scanner section with a fixed size to keep it visible. The purchased element on the right is styled as a red bordered button with rounded edges. Finally, in the outro section, we are centering the H2 and setting a width of 70% for a balanced layout. For smooth scrolling, I've added some lens glasses, handling different scroll behaviors for a seamless experience across the page. You can grab this from official lens documentation website. And that's it for styling. Now let's bring everything to life using JavaScript. We'll start by initializing smooth scrolling using lens, which will handle the scroll animation and update scroll trigger on each scroll event. We are connecting lens to the GSAP ticker for a smooth, lag-free experience. Let's start by setting up the scene, which will be the base for everything we add in 3.js. First, we create a scene object with a light background color to keep things clean and make our 3D models stand out. Next, we add a camera, which is how we'll view the 3D scene. We are using a perspective camera, which mimics how our eyes see things in real life. It has a field of view of 75 degrees and the aspect ratio matches the current width and height of the window. Now we need a renderer which will actually draw everything on the screen. We are creating a WebGL renderer which supports 3D graphics in the browser. We set up a few options here and TLS is set to true which makes the edges of objects look smooth avoiding jagged lines. Alpha is also set to true which enables transparency. Next, we set the renderer's background color to white and its size to match the window's dimensions. We also set the pixel ratio which helps the scene look sharp on high resolution screens like those on mobile devices. To add more realism, we enable shadow mapping which lets object cast shadows. Here we are using a soft shadow type which will give smoother shadows for a more natural look. For realistic lighting, we enable physically accurate lighting and set tone mapping which adjusts the color balance of the lights. We use Asus Filmic Tone Mapping to keep lighting balanced and we set the exposure to 2.5 for a slightly brighter scene. Finally, we add the renderer to the model div on our HTML page. This way, everything we render in this scene will appear in that div. And that completes the basic scene setup. Next, I am pasting in some lighting settings. You can ignore this part or maybe adjust these based on the model you are using. I had to use a bit of help from ChatGPT here as my model appeared a bit too dark initially, so it helped me tweak the lights until it looked right. Feel free to modify these if needed. Now I am adding a simple animation function called basic animate. This function renders the scene with the camera view and then it keeps refreshing using request animation frame function giving us a continuous render. For now, it's just a basic setup to get our model visible on the screen. This function will be replaced with the full animation loop once everything is set up. Next, we load the 3D model using GLTF loader which is perfect for handling GLB or GLTF files. Here, first we set up the load function to find our model file. Once the model loads, we assign it to a variable called model and traverse through each part of it. This lets us adjust details of the model's materials. 
we set metalness and roughness to give the model a subtle metallic and matte look. We also increase the map intensity to adjust how the environmental lighting affects the model adding realism. Additionally, we enable cast shadow and receive shadow on each mesh so the model can both cast and receive shadows in the scene. Next, we ensure the model is centered by calculating its bounding box and getting its center point. We adjust its position so that it's perfectly centered in the scene, making it look balanced from all angles. Then we add the model to the scene. To properly frame the model, we calculate its largest dimension and set the camera Z position based on this, ensuring the model fits perfectly within the view. Finally, we set the model's initial scale to zero. This allows us to play a smooth entry animation when the model appears. We also stop our basic animate function and start the main animation loop, so our scene is now ready for interactive animations. Next, we set some animation variables. Float amplitude controls how much the model floats up and down. Float speed sets the speed of the floating effect. Rotation speed defines how fast the model rotates. Then there is a flag to control whether the model should be floating. Current scroll will help us track the scroll position to link animations to scrolling. And we also set up the scanner section. We define the sticky height, which is the viewport height, so this section sticks in place when we scroll. Next, we locate elements we'll be animating in this section, scanner section, scanner position, and scan container. We also set up the scan sound, a sound effect that plays during the scan animation for an extra layer of interactivity. Finally, we use GSAP to set the scan container scale to zero initially, so we can animate it to scale up smoothly later on. First, we create a function called play initial animation. This gives our model a smooth entry by scaling it from zero to its full size over one second. We also scale up the scan container from zero to its full size at the same time, making both elements appear smoothly on screen. Next, we set up two scroll triggers to control animations as we scroll. The first one starts at the top of the page and runs until we scroll back up to the top. When scrolling back, it scales the model and scan container back to its full size, making sure they appear smoothly. This next one is applied to the scanner section. When this section enters the viewport, first we turn off the floating effect to keep the model steady. The model rotates 360 degrees while the scan sound effect plays, giving a smooth immersive experience. Once the rotation completes, we scale down the model and scan container, making them disappear as if they were scanned away. If we scroll back up, the scan container is reset to scale 0 and it smoothly scales out up again, keeping the animation seamless. These scroll triggers allow us to create smooth interactive animations based on the user's scroll position. Next, we set up an event handler for scrolling using Lenis. Each time we scroll, we update current scroll with the new scroll position. This will let us link scroll progress to our model's animations. Finally, we create the main animate function. This will run continuously, allowing us to add smooth animations. First, if the model is set to be float, 
we calculate a vertical offset using sine function to create a gentle up and down motion making the model appear as if it's floating. Then we calculate scroll progress which gives us the scroll position relative to the scanner section. This controls the model's rotation. For the X rotation we rotate it fully around based on the scroll progress. For the Y rotation we add a subtle continuous rotation using rotation speed. Finally we render the scene with the updated camera and model positions. This animate function will keep refreshing, creating smooth, real-time animations as we scroll. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.